Okay, so we got this tie piece. Looks like it's ready to go. And just to put on the tie, right? Well, I'm gonna show you guys how much work needs to go into finishing something once it's quote unquote done. So we have this tie piece tooled, stained, pretty much ready to go. But here's the last couple steps we gotta do. These are what we call our finishing steps. So what we're gonna do is take one of these blue shop towels, got some acrylic resin. I'm going to go like this. Get a little bit of resin on that rag like this. This might be a little tricky to see on camera um, in real time happening, but I'm hoping we can get a good before and after so you can see the color change. What this does is this is gonna lighten our tooling up. I'm sure as you guys can see, the tooling over here looks a lot lighter. Over here, this side looks a little bit muddy. As we remove, the stain that's kind of sitting on these surface parts, you know, like this kind of vine right here, this is gonna give us higher contrast between the lighter surface and the darker backgrounds and the darker details we got going on inside the petals. I hope it's visible on camera now because I can see clearly with my own two eyes the difference, but you'll see that this side's gonna lighten up a lot, kind of like this side over here. And there we have our final color. You can also see that that kind of gives us a nice gloss as well. So it'll be nice and pretty in the sunlight. Now our next step is to uh, bevel the edges. And we use this tool here, which this is an edge beveler. What we're gonna do is run this along the side. You can see how that's a right angle there. See how this is flat all the way down. What we're gonna do is basically take off this corner so it's a lot nicer to feel in the hands. And then now, this gives us, see how that edge is a little bit rounded there now? It's not as abrasive and square. It's gonna feel a lot nicer in the hands. But now we're flipping it over to the back side. Um, because this is gonna be sewn to something, we don't want it to make it too round here because there's gonna be a funky little gap between the leather and the tie that we're sewing it to. So this edge we're gonna run in here, um, the top side we use the number two, which is a lot larger. And then the back side we're gonna use a zero, which is gonna be a lot finer. So we have good contact and no funky little gap on the back side. So here on our next step, we're going to do the edges. We're gonna take our tie piece. We're gonna take some black stain in this jar and this dauber we got here. And we're going to put stain on these edges and give us a nice finished look. As you can see there, it just already looks so much nicer and more finished. So we actually got great coverage. And what I'm gonna do now, um, basically because it is gonna be sewn, you might see a little glimpse of these edges between the tie itself and this piece of leather. So I'm gonna come back and run it kind of over the edge on the backside like this so that if you do kind of see a little bit of the backside from the front or the part where the tie and the piece of leather come together, this is gonna kind of give us a little bit of security that you don't see any raw leather. This step isn't necessarily uh, necessary, if you will, but we go the extra step here. 
and really try and make things as nice and tidy as possible. So as you can see, it's looking really nice, looking pretty finished now, if I do say so myself. We got one last thing we do before we sew it together. So here is what our edges look like. If you notice, they're a little bit rough. You can kind of see some texturing here. You can kind of see the fibers of that hide and that cross section. You can see it looks rough. So what we're gonna do now is take our beeswax and rub it here on these sides and you'll see that beeswax build up it actually makes it look worse initially now we're gonna go take it over to the polishing wheel so here we have our bench grinder, just a standard old six inch bench grinder. And then here is the, here's my burnishing wheel, or my burnishing tool that I got hooked to it. Shout outs, Jason Sosak, my brother um, actually made me this. I got all kinds of different sizes. I got like a small, medium, a large. So here's our edges, how they initially look. And there we have it, nice glossy edges. Okay, so now on a piece like this, it gets pretty tricky slash stressful because the tie, not that we can't replace the tie, I just really don't want to have to replace the tie. So we have to be super careful when we go to glue it down that everything is super even and everything is super squared up. So I will always do like a, a kind of a test mock-up look at it to make sure I can kind of see roughly what my margins are for like hangover you can see those there very little hangover here from the tie on the back side so now I know that's what I need to kind of shoot for so when I actually lay it down with glue on the back side I'm gonna pay attention to this tip and then just gently kind of press the whole tie down like that. So luckily this is not something we have to glue super crazy. We kind of just need this glue to serve its purpose in holding the, the piece of leather uh, down to the tie until we sew it. And the sewing is going to be what really holds this piece of leather onto the tie itself. As you notice, I don't go crazy up to the edges. That's just because if I go too close to the edges or have any kind of spillover, then it's gonna make a really ugly mess on this tie fabric. So we let it dry for a little bit, just enough so it's tacky. Now the most stressful part. See, I'm making contact down here. My margins there are good. And what I'm gonna do is press, and then as I go, going to kind of hang my fingers over the edges to make sure that the leather is nice and even. So I really like how that looks. Now we're going to clip it. Now we're gonna let this dry for 15, 20 minutes or so. All right, we're ready to bring it over to the sewing machine. I always want to kind of start sewing it from a place that's a little inconspicuous. You don't necessarily want to start it down at the bottom where most of the attention is going to be at. We're going to want to start it up at the top, down the side, or even, you know, some people start it, you know, somewhere up here, but because, you know, the symmetry of it, I usually try and avoid doing the top, uh, doing the tops of things like right here. So we're going to start it in this upper right corner right here.
now we got our loose threads here. And make sure that that sewing that knot ends up in the middle of the leather. Burn our loose threads. Something sharp. Just the nubs. those joint tips down in between the stitching. There we have it.